Today on Rock the Park. Are you ready to face the abyss? Oh my gosh. Oh wow. But that's a decent sized shark. We're diving deep. We're dealing with a thousand foot trench and the snake of the sea. We're in the Caribbean where nature offers brilliant surprises. Oh, make light, make light, make light. Oh, that's so crazy. Along with awesome adventures. Hold on, Jack. It's going to be a rough one. Oh. And it all starts right now. I'm Jack Stewart. <laughs> and I'm Colton Smith. <laughs> We've been buddies for years, and we love exploring the national parks. It's all about packing up a car and just doing it, just hitting the road. Our goal is to visit every national park in this country. And when you go off the beaten path like we do, there's no telling what will happen next. Get set to rock the park. We are on our way to St. Croix in the US Virgin Islands. St. Croix is a tropical paradise, but it's not your typical island getaway. It's home to a handful of national parks and tons of adventure. All right, you ready, man? We're gonna miss the plane. The islands are calling, let's go. Come on. St. Croix is the easternmost point of the United States and is located about 1,100 miles southeast of Miami in the Caribbean Sea. It's the largest of the U.S. Virgin Islands, which also includes St. John and St. Thomas. The islands are home to five national parks, and that's why we're here. Our first stop is Christiansted, the capital of St. Croix, where you can check out what life was like here during the 18th and 19th centuries. This wasn't even an American territory until the early 1900s. 1917 to be exact. That's when America bought it from Denmark in order to have a stronghold in the Caribbean during World War I. It's so crazy that there's a fort here. <laughs> fort Christiansvern, named for the reigning Danish king, was built to protect the colonists from invaders, including pirates. The fort housed Danish troops, and these tiny cells were used to punish prisoners. Wow. Well, you got quite the view up here. You could definitely see any pirates coming in. They were harvesting sugar cane, and the pirates wanted to come in and snag some of that loot. This would be enough to scare them off. I mean, they built this thing in the 1730s, and it's still standing. All right, you can step right on. Beautiful. Many of the parks in St. Croix protect the beauty of the islands, including what's under the water. This is incredible. You can already see how clear this water is. It's going to be perfect for snorkeling. Buck Island Reef National Monument is about one and a half miles north of St. Croix. Buck Island has got over 250 different types of fish. With water like this, it gives us a great chance at seeing some of these guys. And our goal is to see a shark. We're going to be looking for nurse sharks, also the Caribbean Reef shark. Let's snorkel! Woo! Oh, remember, that means shark. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> the National Monument extends for 30 square miles and was created by President Kennedy to protect the ancient barrier reef that wraps around two-thirds of the island. Immediately, I look down and I see all these things that look like brains. Named for the way it looks, brain coral is a strong and slow-growing hard coral, important for building reefs like this one. We want to make sure we're being incredibly careful. This coral is so fragile, and some of it has been growing here for hundreds of years. This park has an underwater nature trail, complete with markers to help you identify the fish. Right as we enter the trail, we spot this big school of blue tang. And they're all synchronized, just swimming together. It's so cool. They'll all come together as one, and they're eating the algae off of the coral, which is allowing the coral to grow and rejuvenate itself. Giant branches of elkhorn coral create walls that form a lagoon between the island and the sea. So many amazing species depend on this coral for food and shelter. We're seeing brightly colored parrotfish. 
spiny lobster, and even a barracuda. They're these long fish. They've got this big mouth, and they're just kind of mean mugging you. And they've got teeth. <laughs> We've been in the water for about an hour when we spot a shark. This one's a nurse shark, recognizable because it's got that distinctive long tail fin. We got to keep our distance because A, it's a shark, and B, we don't want to interfere with any of the fish out here, and C, it's a shark. Actually, nurse sharks are generally harmless unless you accidentally bump into one. These slow-moving bottom dwellers are also nocturnal, so during the day, they sometimes rest on the sea floor. I mean, he's big, yes, but he's not going to harm us unless we start poking and prying him, which we won't be doing. Oh my gosh, that's cool. So awesome. We saw a shark. Yeah, oh, we saw a shark. That is oh, some salty dude. water. Whoa. Wow. Now might be a good time to take a little break. Yup, there's a storm rolling in. Go, dude. Get out of here. Right. See ya. These wild seas have more crazy surprises in store for us. Oh! Oh! Oh, he's right there! Yeah. He's right there! Yeah. And we'll do anything to find them. Jellyfish, jellyfish, where are you? <laughs>on the island of St. Croix, about to embark on one of the most unusual experiences you can have in the Virgin Islands. How you doing? Yeah. Ty McRae will be our guide through the Salt River National Historic Park and Preserve, a place that protects one of the most illuminating marvels on Earth. So bioluminescence. Yeah, bioluminescence. I kind of describe it as swimming in pixie dust or uh, Tinkerbell's dust. <laughs> All right. Well, I I'm hoping we get the chance to swim in some pixie dust. This pixie dust is something you can only see at night in the dark water of a bioluminescent bay. That's why Ty's got us kayaking into the Salt River Bay, trying to beat the rising moon. The darker, the better. We're paddling across the ocean in the pitch black right now. I can feel the waves, but I can't see them. <laughs> it's OK. We just have waves to our left, beautiful beaches to our right. Yeah, but what's in between? Turtles, sharks. No. Oh. <laughs> The Salt River Bay is one of a handful of bioluminescent, or bio bays, in the world. Bioluminescence means living light. There are several types of creatures that glow in these waters, and we hope to see a few. All right, guys, you ready? It's time to shut off the lights. All right, All right. let's do it. Our high-tech cameras make the sky look like it's twilight. It's not. We're really in the dark. There are other things than bioluminescence down here, guys. Dinoflagellates are tiny organisms that emit light as a defense mechanism to scare off predators. We're trying to stir some up by waving our arms around in the water. And every time you bump them, it causes a chemical reaction to happen inside, and one of the byproducts would be light. This is what they look like when they're in full force. Unfortunately, today's rainstorm created conditions that aren't perfect for maximum twinkling. But we're getting a little action. Oh, yeah. Look at that. Oh, yeah. You can't see that many of them, but every little guy that you can see is pretty amazing. There's another glow-in-the-dark creature out here. Jack, look at that. See that? And it's much bigger and easier oh, yeah. to spot. Jellyfish, jellyfish, yeah, jellyfish. Yeah. He's right over there. I saw him. Comb jellyfish also light up as a defense mechanism. But to really appreciate them, you need to be close up. Would it be better if we jumped in and our whole body was going through there? Or is... You guys want to try? Let's do it. All right. Ooh, ooh, what? Ooh, 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 ooh. Oh, make light, make light, make light, make light. Come on. We're so close. Comb jellies don't sting. So if we get one, we can safely hold it. Got one? Got one. Got, Got one. one. Okay, come here, guys. I'm going to just pass them in your hands. Don't let them go. Oh, my gosh. Look at that. You see him? Oh, wow. Look at that. Oh, man. Every time we shake our hands, you can see him just light up more and more. And he looks like a little circular glow stick. Oh, there it is. You want to hold him? Yes, I do. All right, here we go. Careful now. Oh, you oh. got him. You got him. Oh, no, no, no! Oh, Where'd he go? No. Where'd he go? No! Oh, oh there he is! No, there get him, get him! Oh, I, I, get him. Where'd he go? 
Let's find another one. Yeah. Oh man, I could stay out here all night. <laughs> Can't believe I held a jellyfish. <laughs> jellyfish, jellyfish, where are you? I think swimming was the key because we're starting to see jellyfish everywhere. I don't know what it is. I've got great hands, but jellyfish, they elude me. Come on. Well, I'm trying to just cup your hands. He's slippery. <laughs> <laughs> Back to a song we all love and know. Jellyfish, jellyfish, where are you? <laughs> but seriously, where are you? Ooh. Yeah. Ooh, ooh. Oh, there's one. He's going. So, oh, look, get him. I got him. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Look at that. That is one of nature's miracles. The mangrove forests surrounding the bay create just the right level of oxygen, nutrients, and pH that allow comb jellies and other glow-in-the-dark creatures to thrive. But scientists still aren't sure why it occurs or how long this magic will last. Oh, look at that. Got another. Look got at one? that. Oh, wow, two. Uh -huh. Oh, my. Two jellies. Come on, shine, little buddy, shine. See? This has oh. been an unbelievable night on the water. Wow. But tomorrow, we're about to gain a deeper understanding of this amazing island. Are you ready to face the abyss? As we take our adventure from the bay to an underwater canyon. A thousand foot trench kind of freaks me out a bit. We're in the U.S. Virgin Islands, preparing to see St. Croix from a whole new perspective. You guys ready to do some diving? Oh, yeah. Yes. All right, let's do it. OK. All right. <laughs> We're heading out to one of the Caribbean's best kept secrets. It's called the Salt River Canyon, a thousand foot deep ravine underwater. How many great white sharks can we expect to see? Uh, well, we put the memo in this morning. Uh, we didn't get as much of a response as we were hoping. <laughs> While diving along the canyon wall, Beth and her team regularly see black tips and nurse sharks. Black tip sharks are fast and energetic predators and are known to leap out of the water. Usually, they avoid humans. We're more worried about what's opposite the canyon wall, the abyss. So when you say the abyss, what does that mean? That means thousands of feet of water. The wall drops off anywhere between about 40 to 60 feet, depends on where you are, and that edge just kind of disappears straight down. The walls of this gorge were formed thousands of years ago by a rushing waterfall that cut into the rock, creating a dramatic underwater landscape. I've got a little bit of a fear of open ocean. As we get closer to getting in the water, I'm just thinking about everything. This is a daunting dive for me. We're dealing with a thousand foot trench and sharks. And we're also going to be going 80 feet down, which is deeper than we've ever dove before. 30 feet has been the deepest we've gone until now. You put your mask on, you stare down, and it hits you. OK, I'm going down there you can see just miles of blue. As soon as I start to descend, I feel calm. But we still need to get down to about 60 feet to see the wall. As I descend, I realize I might have a little bit of a problem. My mask keeps filling up with water. No matter what I seem to do, I'm having to clear this thing every five seconds. To clear my mask, I breathe in air from my tank, then blow it out through my nose into the mask to force the water out. We're headed into a really crazy environment right now. You can just see all of these different fish, all of these different colors of the coral. All sorts of marine life hang out in the coral, looking for food and hiding from predators, like these wild-looking trumpet fish. They like to swim up and down vertically to blend in with the coral. I look over and I spot a massive eel. It's just swimming along, and let me know, I'm afraid of snakes. <laughs> this guy's like the snake of the sea. Green moray eels average six feet long and 65 pounds. They open and close their mouths to take in water to breathe over their gills. These guys look menacing, but they're not a threat to humans unless they're provoked. 
So I'm pointing this thing out, and I look over at Colton, and he seems distracted. I'm just being like, look, we've got an eel down there, and it's just not getting through. I'm still having trouble with my mask, plus I've used up most of my air trying to fix the problem. After only half an hour, it's time for me to get up to the surface. So Colton's headed up to the surface, and I'm following Beth. And all of a sudden, she points over and signals that there's a shark. I look under this coral, and there it is, this nurse shark, chilling right there in the coral. This guy looks like he's taking a nap. Woo! That was great. <laughs> what happened to you? My mask just kept flooding. We have to take a break. All right. Surface interval? Surface interval. OK. A surface interval is time out of the water in between dives. It'll give our bodies time to release the excess nitrogen we naturally absorb while diving. Luckily for you, we've got one more dive. I know. I'm fixing this mask problem, and then I'm going to have the dive of my life. <laughs> Quote me on that. The next dive takes us to the west wall and into the abyss. We're about to dive into the abyss, just off the island of St. Croix. But Colton's mask is still taking in water, and then we discover it's not the mask that's the problem. Grab a glop of that and kind of smoosh it all up in there. <laughs> <laughs> Apparently, even a short beard like mine can cause a mask to leak. Silicone grease fills in the gap, smoothing the surface so the mask will seal. Did it work? Yeah! All right! All right, silicone! <laughs> All greased up and ready to dive. Now we can head over to the west wall of this canyon. Our first dive was so incredible, but we didn't really go out into the abyss. I have a feeling on this next dive, we're going to get our opportunity. Thousands of feet of open ocean separate the walls of the canyon. And this is the side known for the most dramatic drop off, into the abyss. For us, it's terrifying and exhilarating at the same time. So we descend down to about 30 feet, and we're swimming out on the coral. And then all of a sudden, you see it just stop. And it turns to black. We are headed out over the wall into open water. We're not talking some nice gradual slope. This thing just goes and drops. It's crazy. It feels like we're in outer space. You're floating, and you can't see the bottom. And we keep going down and down. Then I check my gauge, and we are at 87 feet. That's 87 feet below the surface, hovering over a massive canyon. We've got the abyss on one side and the coral-encrusted wall on the other. It's not unusual for sea turtles to appear out of nowhere to munch on sea sponges. And sometimes you can see and hear dolphins swimming by. And it's got all of these areas where you can swim through the coral, go down, check things out, go through little ravines. And right now, we're working our way along it. As I look over, I see this giant school of these bright, blue, beautiful fish. One last thing to remind me how amazing this experience is. That was great. That was so awesome. So much fun. Seeing the drop off for the first time was insane. It's a different world, and it just takes a second to get adjusted to it. But once you do, it's, it's just paradise. And that pretty much sums up the trip. Where else can you go swimming with sharks and hold a couple of glow-in-the-dark jellyfish in your hands? And then dive into an underwater canyon, deeper than we've ever gone before. This was an experience that made me incredibly nervous. And then once I got in there, I trusted my ability, and I kept calm. And it turned into one of the greatest experiences of my life. Great adventure and incredible beauty all in one place. And remember, hey, if we can do it, so can you. So the next chance you get, go out and rock the park.
Hey everybody, thanks for watching. Make sure to leave any questions or comments that you have. And please subscribe to the channel. There's a lot more to come.